bless your name today. Honor and praise as we lift up our hands to the Lord. Welcome to Living the Abundant Life with Dr. Samuel Meredith. All things are upheld by the words of his power. Get ready to discover the laws that govern the kingdom of God and how those laws can be applied in your life through active faith. That is the picture of what God wants to do for you in your life. And now, Living the Abundant Life with Dr. Samuel Meredith. We're in our Obey and Follow the Plan series. This is the 15th installment. And today we're talking about walking in boldness. Again, walking in boldness. Now, before we talk about walking in boldness, there's a few things I want to speak about first. There's some things we have to do first. Fear. What is fear? Fear is simply faith in reverse. Fear is, once again, simply faith in reverse. You believe something bad is going to happen or you're afraid that something's going to catch up with you. Fear. Now, the enemy loves to use fear. And, and, and if you continue to meditate on those fearful thoughts, you know what? You become terrorized. You'll be in terror. Now, what is terror? Terror is just a an organized way to to use fear as a uh, as a tool to stop you, to paralyze you. Think about terrorists. What do they do? They use fear, the threat of something, perhaps something they've done put to someone else or just the fear of that. Why? So they can paralyze you or render you useless, if you will. Fear. Now let's get this go a little deeper here. Fear and terror. When you have fear and terror, one can oppress you. What is oppression? Oppression is just the use of fear and terror to steal one's or take one's goods or their services or their property. Through, once again, fear and terror, they can take things away from you. Now, you know, we don't have to get too deep with this. Think about in the past, the neighborhood bully, the school bully. What did they do? Well, Perhaps you have heard about them uh, and, and, and or perhaps you saw them terrorize someone. So fear could have set in. And then, you know, sometimes they may be a little bit bold. They may try to put their point their attention towards you or they may make threats towards you or they may jump at you and try to get you to flinch or whatever. What is, he, what that, what is that person trying to do? They're trying to terrorize you. They're trying to terrorize you, trying to keep you in fear now it comes to a point if they continue to do that they may get the idea you know what i can use that person they may try to get what try to take your lunch money they may try to take your lunch money what are they doing they're getting goods or services something from you for their own personal personal benefit how are they doing this through terror now think about it you have a fear of that person attacking you a fear that because that person is bigger than you or you know that person's uh, uh, reputation, they'll try to terrorize you or paralyze you to get you not to move forward. Once again, we're talking about boldness, but hang with me. We're going to get there. Now, oftentimes, when a person's in that situation, they'll do one of three things. Either they'll stand up and defend themselves or they may just shrink in fear every time the person comes around. They may, the bully comes around, they may, you know, be terrified or whatever. And then another point is they may try to cope with it. What do you mean cope with it? They'll try to grin with the bully, try to befriend them. Why? So that perhaps they won't terrorize them as much. You know, if you're on their side, they will, you know, perhaps that once again, that bully won't terrorize you as much. And the thought behind that is, well, if I cope with this, it's better than being picked on all the time. I'm going somewhere. Stay with me. Now, once again, we're talking about walking in boldness. Now, if a person can put you in fear, they can terrorize you or op and oppress you. This is called bondage. You are now in bondage bondage you're in bondage now the word of god has some things to say about this but before i get there i want to say this the enemy satan is the master oppressor now his number one tools to oppress people is always the fear of death 
the death of something but the fear of death is the master of all fears everything emanate or comes from the fear of death and the enemy will use any type of fear he can to render you powerless to render you powerless to paralyze you to attack you he will try to steal from you he will try to sap the life out of you now if you have your Bibles, turn to Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. I have good news for you. Remember, we're talking about walking in boldness. Walking in boldness. And Acts chapter 10, verse 38, it reads, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who were about went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him sickness is a form of oppression it's a form of oppression it's the enemy tries he, he'll try to hunt you with this you know you can't live life oh I got to deal with this you know Jesus came to destroy the works of the enemy to deliver those who are oppressed by the enemy that's good news you don't have to take it anymore stand on god's word what does the scripture says with his stripes we we were healed you have to take that and believe in that jesus came and went about doing good and healing all who were once again oppressed by the devil because god was with him can i have good news for you today God is with you. He is with you. Let's look at another scripture. Let's, let's, we're going to get some more scriptures that talk more about this. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. We'll begin reading at verse 14. It says, So then, as the children share in flesh and blood, he likewise took part in these. Now, he's talking about Jesus. Jesus became a man just like you and I. He took upon flesh. He, he laid aside all of his godly, his divine powers. Now, he was still God, but he refused to use any of those powers. And he came and walked this earth as a man. Let's continue reading. So that through death, through his death, he might destroy him who has the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver those who through fear of death were throughout their lives subject to bondage. Again, because Jesus came as a man, he took on all the sins of the world when he was on the cross, he died. And when he died, he went to hell as a substitute for you and I because we don't have to go. We don't have to go. And he delivered those through fear of death were throughout their lives subject to, to bondage. Well, I'm telling you, explaining you how Jesus did it. So he went to hell to deliver us. So one, we don't have to. We have salvation, so we can go to heaven. But we're talking about boldness, but particularly we're talking about this fear. How did he do it? Let's go a little bit deeper. What did he do while he was there in hell? Let's go to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, we'll begin reading at verse 15. It says, And having disarmed authorities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them by the cross. In other words, by his death, when he was, went to hell, he disarmed authorities or the enemy and all of their powers and made a show of them. Some version says an open spectacle. Now think about this. All the people that were in paradise looking down at Jesus whoop, whooping Satan. He whooped Satan and all of his cohorts. G or, or Satan at one time had power of, of death and uh, hell. He had the keys to it. But I love in Revelations, it talks about Jesus, the resurrected Jesus in Revelation. He talks about how he has the keys of death and hell. Satan doesn't even have the keys of his own domain anymore. Jesus whooped him right there. Isn't that good news? That is good news. Good news. Now, what's the point? Where am I going with all of this? When you're going through your trials and tribulations, I have good news for you. You don't even have to look like you worried 
or you have a look of dismay because think about it oftentimes when we as people of god if we're going through something or something is real intense the battle is intense we'll have this frown we'll get frustrated we'll be upset but you know what you don't have to be that way you know why because god the, i'm sorry jesus christ has already whooped satan and in fact one script says he took the sting of death away listen he's already whooped satan we have the victory in fact the word of god says that praise be to god who always causes us to triumph he always causes us to triumph so guess what we don't have to wear a frown when we're going through different things because we know we're going to come on the other side victorious he's already given us the victory satan is just like a lion listen without any teeth he just has a roar that's it he will threaten you that's what he'll do he will threaten you now if you think about the scriptures i'm thinking about the three hebrew boys great example if you notice when they're about to be cast in the fiery furnace if you will they didn't have they weren't acting all sheepish and scared they were bold it's something about when you stand for god in your test or in your trials or your tribulations wherever you're going through he will empower you to go through that thing in fact, I love the scripture says they didn't even smell like smoke. You don't have to smell like like smoke. Remember, we're talking about walking in boldness. Remember, Daniel, the same thing when they cast him in the lion's den. You know what? Daniel one 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 tripping or nothing like that. He didn't compromise. He went on in the lion's den. And in fact, the, the next day, the word of God says the king Darius, he called out to Daniel. Your, was your God able to deliver you? And he says, oh, king, look, he greeted the king, said good things about the king. He wasn't mad or upset. He said that the angels came and shut the mouths of the lions. Daniel was all right. Let's think about Jesus. When he went through his temptation, Jesus wasn't sweating. He had, though, he answered the enemy with the word of God. It is written. He knew, in fact, the word of God says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. The Jesus knew what his mission was. These temptations, it was, just a, it was just a formality. It was a formality. Yes, was, it was a real temptation, but you know what? When you know what's on the other side, it will empower you to go through whatever it is you need to go through to be successful. Amen? Let me give you one more. Do you remember Abraham? When he was going through his test, when God told him to sacrifice his only son, Isaac, it didn't say where Abraham was upset or anything like that. He took off the next morning, him and Isaac and some few servants, they went up to the mountain uh, to, to offer, well, him, actually, eventually him and Isaac went up to the mountain, and uh, he was about to sacrifice Isaac like God told him to do. But if you notice, Abraham was all right. I love the New Testament, the scripture that sheds light about this. The word of God says that Abram supposed that God was going to resurrect Isaac from the dead. Now, why was Abram, Abraham, I'm sorry, so convinced that God was going to deliver him? Because God already gave, make, gave him a promise that Isaac, it was going to be through Isaac that his seed was going to come through. And this whole seed was going to be blessed. It was going to be through Isaac. So he knew that God was going to do something. But it, isn't it interesting because he was not in fear, he began to think and have God's thoughts, God's point of view. Think about, at that time, who ever heard of a resurrection? But because Abraham was so focused on the things of God, he began to get these God ideas. Once again, at that point, who ever heard of a resurrection? It's something about when you walk with God, when you take God at his word, when you constantly meditate on what God has told you or what God is saying to you, you begin to see things once again from God's perspective. Abram had the revel Abraham, I'm sorry, had the revelation that God was going to resurrect his son. So he had great confidence in going through the test and the trial. While we know that, that God uh, showed him a ram in the bush, but the point was this, he was willing he was willing. Hello, I hope that you're enjoying this lesson. And if you are enjoying today's Bible lesson, consider partnering with us. I have a mandate from God to teach God's people how to prosper his way. You may ask the question, how do I prosper his way? Well, I'm glad you asked. You prosper his way by number one, getting the plan from God. You see, God is the only one who can give you the plan. 
Number two, implement the plan. And while you're implementing the plan, walk with integrity. The word of God says it this way. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness or his way of doing things. All these things will be added unto you. So let's recap. Get the plan from God. Implement the plan and walk with integrity. Now, let's get back to today's Bible lesson. Thank you. Now, let's go to we're talking about boldness now. Let's go to Acts chapter four. Acts chapter four. And while we're turning there, let me kind of give you the backdrop. What has happened? Uh, Peter and John was was uh, on their way to the temple by the gate called beautiful. And while they were on their way, there was a crippled man who asked Peter and John. He said, hey, man, you got alms for me. Can you give me anything? I'm paraphrasing. And Peter said, look, in silver and gold, I do not have. But such as I have, I'll give it to you. He told that that crippled man, he said, man, rise up. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up. And this, that man got up. The word of God says strength entered to his, his ankles and his legs. He got up and started praising God and worshiping God. He walked in the temple right there with Peter and James. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, not Peter and James, but Peter and John. Walked in the temple with them praising and magnifying God. I can imagine. Can you imagine if you were crippled for all those years when, and, and God delivered you and healed you? When you be praising God, well, listen, I have good news for you today. Anyone under the sound of my voice, anything that's going on with you that's contrary to the word of God, God has already delivered you. He's already set you free. Remember, the scripture says he freed those who are oppressed by the devil through all type of sicknesses or diseases or whatever. He healed them all, all who once again were oppressed by the devil. Listen, we're in a great spot. He's already delivered. He's already done it for you. You just have to receive your healing by faith. Listen, don't be fooled. Listen, you're not waiting on God to heal you. He already has. It's according to your faith, be it unto you. Amen. So let's get back to the story. They were praising God. He was praising God and the people were filled with amazement. Like, man, this is a guy who was crippled. And now he's walking, leaping for joy, praising God. That cost some people's attention. Well, the word of God says that Peter began to talk to the people and began to preach to the people about Jesus Christ of Nazareth, how he came and he was he was crucified on the cross and he was he died and, and rose again. He gave them the whole salvation plan and then told them the scriptures about and he told them, hey, listen, 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 you all did this to him, but you was in your ignorance while he was preaching to the people. The word of God says the Sadducees and the soldiers, the captains came to arrest them. Also during that day, the word God says, I believe it was about 5,000 men was added to the church because these signs, because of these signs and wonders. Well, they captured Peter and John, arrested them rather. And uh, the next day, the word of God says that the, that the Sadducees, the, the high priest, they began to question Peter and and John and say well what authority do you have to speak in this man's in Jesus Christ in his name and he said look here and they began to preach to them listen they had boldness they began to preach to them and so uh, 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 the, the the high priest began to, to ask them say well look here look here y'all have to stop all this He's, they said look we'll let you go but don't ever preach Jesus Christ again Peter replied back he said now look whether we're supposed to obey God and man, you think about it, but we're going to obey God. In other words, we're not backing down to you. Then the word of God says that they continue to threaten them. I want to pick up here in Acts 4, and let's pick up the reading now in verse 29. Acts 4 and 29. And it says, now Peter and John is back to their fellowship with their people, the believers, their, their, their group. And this is what they said. They said, now this is a prayer. They said, now, Lord, look on their threats. They're talking about, now they're praying to God. They're talking about the threats that the, that the high priest gave them and strictly warned them not to preach or mention the name of Jesus. 
They said once again, now, Lord, look on their threats and grant that your servants may speak your word with great boldness by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be performed in the name of your holy son, Jesus. Just like he, they healed the, 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 the lame man by the gate was healed and he was leaping for joy. They said, ask, ask the Lord for more, more boldness to do this. Regardless of the threatenings, they asked for boldness to do it even more. Use your servants. Grant us, grant us the power to speak boldly in your name and that signs and wonders may follow. Let's continue reading. It says, when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God with boldness. They spoke the word of God with boldness. The word of God says the place shook. Let me tell you something. When you speak boldly for God under the anointing and under the direction of the Holy Spirit, something supernatural will happen. The anointing of boldness will fall on your life. Now, there's something that we can learn here. Now, let's look at it. They were threatened. The enemy tried to tried to snuff out the miracle power of God, tried to silence them. But what was their response? Their response was to speak boldly, ask God for more boldness, grant them boldness to speak regardless of their threatenings. They want power to speak, power to act with signs and wonders regardless of the threats. In other words, they did the opposite of what the enemy wanted them to do. Anytime the enemy is threatening you, with sickness, with disease, with threats to shut your mouth, with, with all type of things, you ask God for boldness to do the very opposite. Led by the Spirit of God, you will see miraculous results. You will see miraculous results. Boldness. Whatever the enemy's trying to do, trying to get you to confess something, or he wants you to always talk about how bad you feel, or, or your bad attitude. No, 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 no. You can have a good attitude and have boldness about it. Listen, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. The word of God says that one of Jesus, remember, he came to destroy the works of darkness. Jesus came to take care of business when he was here on the earth. So we have a right to walk in the boldness of God. Once again, whatever the enemy is trying to get you to do, whatever he's telling you to do, you do the opposite and ask God to grant you the boldness. Now, when he does this, he'll present opportunities. You step in the boldness and do whatever is the opposite, whatever he's telling you, the enemy's trying to tell you to do. Now, once again, let's get more details. How do we do this? We submit ourselves to God. We resist the devil. Now, if you notice what they did, they submitted themselves to God. They resist the devil and the devil fleed in the situation they were in. They were bold. Listen, they were bold even with with the, with the high priest. Basically, they, what they said, look here, whether you're going to obey God or man, we're going to obey God. They were bold. In fact, the word of God says that the high priest noticed that they were unlearned men. But they noticed that they walked with Jesus. Can I share something with you? Listen, when you walk in that boldness, the only person to give you that type of boldness is Jesus. And people will take note that you are walking with Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Now, let me give you some personal examples about walking in boldness of God and refusing to shrink into fear. Well, the past uh, probably three months or two months, my son, now my son, my young son has some delays. He ran away three times. He ran away three times. The enemy, you know, he tried to present all kind of thoughts to your mind of possible outcomes, how this thing can go. But I remember the word of the Lord came to me. He said, do you remember my covenant with Jacob? My covenant of protection now? In the past, we talked in great details about Jacob, how God protected him, even when it was things that was Jacob's fault, even when his children went up and, and just basically spoiled a whole city through trickery and killed all the men. God still 
protected Jacob and his family. Why? Because Jacob had a covenant. What was God trying to tell me? Remember, you have a covenant. And so when that thought ran through my mind, you know what? I began to speak. You know, what, God, I thank you that you're going to bring my son back. I thank you're going to bring him back. I'm not worried about how well, I don't care. I, uh, listen, I'm not going to speak anything out of my mouth other than what the God's word said about the situation. I have divine protection. That means my children have divine protection. And let me say this. Every, the three times he ran away, it was a miracle how God brought him back, how we found out where he was at. It was a miracle. Now, some of y'all may be thinking, well, brother pastor, you got lucky. Look, you got to be careful of that, blah, blah, blah. Now, please don't misunderstand me. We're taking, his mom is taking precautions, and, and, and I'm supporting those precautions. Because, you know, we're not crazy, but we'll do our part. But guess what? You can't live in fear on this, this, pos this could happen, this can happen. This no, 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 no. Once again, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. It doesn't matter. Listen, I have a co covenant with Almighty God. He is going to bring him back every time. Well, how can I be confident in this? Because I'm confident in God's word. He cannot lie. He will. He is faithful to perform his word every time. Listen, I have boldness. Why? Because I believe God's word. It's not based on me. It's not based on me praying. Uh, 50 hours a day It's not based on me doing a, a prayer train and all those things. no no I'm not, I'm not speaking against those things it's based on my belief in the word of God the promises of God I can lean on those promises and you know what God is always going to perform his word so no I pay no attention on the possible outcomes you know some people, some people may say well this can happen you need to do this no 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 listen we take our precautions in the natural, but we leave the rest of this stuff up to God. Because I have a covenant with Almighty God, I can flat foot stand you in front of you this evening and say, God is going to protect my son every we day. We bless your name today, honor and praise, as we lift up our hands to the Lord. This has been Living the Abundant Life with Dr. Samuel Meredith. We pray that you continue to gain more insight into God's Word as Dr. Meredith shares the good news of the laws that govern the kingdom and how those laws can be applied through the active faith in your life. The Live in the Abundant Life Christian Center is located in Little Rock, Arkansas at 8923 Sunset Lane, directly behind the Dollar General. You are invited to join us each Sunday at 11 a.m. for Sunday School and again at 1145 where you will enjoy powerful worship service. Remember to tune in to KJBN 1050 a.m. every Tuesday and Thursday at 9 a.m. as Dr. Meredith encourages us with Bible-based laws that will help us to prosper in every aspect of our lives. Please send all correspondence to the address on the screen. And we thank you for watching Living the Abundant Life with Pastor Samuel Meredith. Be magnified your name, be glorified, and we lift up our hands to the Lord.